In Hinduism, all the gods are manifestations of Brahman, who is considered to be the ultimate truth and the ultimate reality of the universe. Lord Brahma the creator, Lord Vishnu the preserver, and Lord Shiva the destroyer, and all other gods are simply manifestations of the different attributes of Brahman. But of the millions of gods that exist as manifestations of Brahman, Lord Shiva is known as the most powerful, even more powerful than Lord Vishnu and Lord Brahma. But what makes Lord Shiva so powerful? Let's have a look. First, it is important to know who Lord Shiva is in the first place. In mainstream Hinduism, Lord Brahma, Lord Vishnu, and Lord Shiva are three of the most important deities and are part of the Hindu trinity of male gods called the Trimurti. Lord Brahma serves as the creator, Lord Vishnu serves as the preserver, and Lord Shiva serves as the destroyer of the universe. It is said that during an argument between Lord Brahma and Lord Vishnu about which of them was superior to the other, a large, almost infinite pillar of light appeared before them. Curious and wanting to find the ends of the pillar, Lord Brahma turned into a swan and flew upwards, and Lord Vishnu assumed the form of a boar and went downwards. After going up and down for almost a thousand years and not reaching the end, they both returned to the original starting point and bowed before the pillar. Then suddenly, the Sanskrit letters of Om appeared on the pillar and above them stood Lord Shiva. As the deity of destruction, Lord Shiva is responsible for destroying the entirety of the universe when 1000 yug cycles have passed. See, in Hinduism, time moves in a never-ending cycle called the yug cycle which is divided into four different yugs and lasts for a total of 4.32 million years. So after every 4.32 million years, Lord Shiva performs his Tandav dance and destroys the entirety of the universe. But what makes Lord Shiva so powerful? Here are just a few things about Lord Shiva that demonstrate his incredible power. Lord Shiva wields two of the most powerful weapons in Hinduism called the Trishul and the Pashupatastra. The Trishul is a trident-like weapon that cannot be stopped by anyone but Lord Shiva himself. It was actually used to cut the head of the god Ganesh and cut off Lord Brahma's fifth head. The story of why the god Ganesh has an elephant head is an extremely interesting one and I will cover it in a different video. So the Pashupatastra, which is the second weapon that Lord Shiva wields, is a weapon that is capable of destroying creation itself and can be discharged with the mind, words, and even the eyes. Aside from wielding two of the most powerful weapons in Hinduism, in another story, when the goddess Ganga wanted to descend from the heavens to earth, only Lord Shiva was strong enough to catch the extremely powerful waters of Ganga in his densely matted locks and release her on earth. In another story, the Devas and the Ashuras were churning the waters of the ocean of milk to obtain the nectar of immortality. As a consequence of the churning, the extremely dangerous and poisonous Halahal poison was produced and it began to poison everything around it. So Lord Shiva, to help save everyone, scooped up the poison and drank it. It was his wife, the goddess Parvati, who grabbed Lord Shiva's throat and stopped the poison from spreading. The poison actually turned Lord Shiva's throat blue, which is why Lord Shiva is also called Nilkant. Lord Shiva was also the one who is said to have destroyed the indestructible demon cities of Tripura by shooting a single arrow using his Pinaka bow to erase the cities from existence. In one of the more interesting stories, a sage named Mrikandu prayed to Lord Shiva for a son who blessed him with a son called Markandeya, who was fated to die on his 16th birthday. As he grew closer to his 16th birthday, Lord Brahma taught him a mantra to conquer death. The other deities also pleaded with Lord Shiva to extend the boy's life 
to which Lord Shiva obliged. However, on his 16th birthday, the messengers of Yama, the god of death, came to take the boy, but he kept repeating Lord Shiva's name. Unable to approach the boy, Yama himself came to take him to the underworld. Yama assumed a fearsome form and tied a noose around the boy, who grabbed a lingam, which is an anionic representation of Lord Shiva. As soon as the noose touched the lingam, Lord Shiva emerged. Enraged at Yama, Lord Shiva struck him with his trishul and kicked his chest, thereby killing the god of death himself. However, to maintain the order of life and death, Lord Shiva then revived him. Not only this, according to Shaivism, which is a major Hindu denomination, Lord Shiva is the penultimate reality and truth of the universe. Shaivites believe that all gods including Brahma, Vishnu, Krishna and the others are simply manifestations of the different attributes of Lord Shiva himself. But what do you think? Is Lord Shiva the most powerful Hindu deity or is it someone else? You can drop your answers in the comment section below. If you found this content interesting and want to watch more of it, consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel.